In this video, we're gonna solve one practice question from chapter seven, question number 14, which is about multiple regression when you have categorical variables. And we're gonna use data file audit. So here I have the question, question number 14. So we want to explain the delay in audit audit delay, uh, and we have a sample of 40 companies, and we have um, the um, following information. So we know whether the company is an industrial company or not. So that's a dummy variable. So being industrial or not being industrial, that is a categorical, categorical variable by definition, so we use one dummy variable to uh, model that. We know whether the company is public or private, so we have a dummy variable that takes one if the company is public, zero otherwise. We have a score from one to five, measuring the quality of internal controls of the company. Assuming that, so the conjecture here is that if the quality of internal controls are high, the audit delay should go down. So there should be a negative relationship. But we're gonna see if this is true or not. And then the last one, uh, we have uh, another score um, <clears throat> ranging from one to four this time, and it just, tells us how much of the uh, work has been uh, completed, uh, has been completed prior to the end of the year. So we have this information and now the list of questions that we need to answer. We need to find uh, the estimated regression equation that uses all the four independent variables in order to explain the delay in audit. And then part B, how much of the variation in the sample values of delay does this estimated regression equation explain? So this is just the definition of R squared. So once we run the model, we can just look at the R squared and answer this question. What other independent variables on top of the uh, this four that we just mentioned could you include in this regression model to improve the fit? So here, anything that you feel that has to do with the um, delay in audit. So anything that can contribute to uh, the time that it takes for a company to complete the audit. Um, I mean, you can think of anything that you uh, you feel that it's relevant, but I think if I wanna answer this part of the question, I think one major factor would be the size of the company. As the company gets bigger and bigger, um, I believe that it should take longer to complete the, um, uh, the, the audit, basically. Um, uh, and the size of the company, you can measure that by the number of employees. You can measure that by income. Uh, the second factor might be the uh, type of audit that you're gonna uh, perform. So there are multiple different types of audit that companies may um, actually perform multiple types of uh, internal and external compliance and financial accounting audit that companies may choose to perform. Uh, the next factor might be the sector and the industry of the company. Uh, I mean, imagine like a, a hospital versus a, a manufacturing company versus a, a, like, uh, company in entertainment, for example, industry. So they may have a completely different timeline for uh, completing their 
uh, audit task. The next one, the next part of this question, test the relationship between each independent variable and the dependent variable at 5% level of significance, and then interpret the relationship between each of the independent variables and the dependent variable. So when we are asked to interpret the relationship between two variables, we are uh, going to, we're supposed to mention the um, direction of the relationship. So you should actually look at the coefficient and say whether there is a positive or negative relationship between an independent factor, independent variable, and the dependent variable. Plus, you should comment on the significance of the relationship, whether the relationship is meaningful, is significant, right? Statistically speaking, whether the relationship is strong, is meaningful, is significant, right? And then on the last part, based on the observations, based on the model, um, and I mean, we're, we're gonna see uh, the um, uh, fact, the actually the um, significance of relationship with respect to um, quality and finished. Uh, the question asks us to uh, suggest an alternative model for the regression equation. So here, what we are gonna do, our first alternative model would be uh, a second model that is a result of dropping out anything that is not significant in the original model. So we're gonna run a model with all the independent factors in part A, and then for part B, we're gonna drop all the non-significant factors and run another model with only significant factors. All right, so let's get to the question. So part A, let's just run a um, regression model with all the uh, independent factors. So uh, it's, it's just, just to make sure that we know what we're doing, delay is going to be my dependent variable. Audit delay is what I'm predicting, right? So what I'm trying to explain and industry quality finished in public, these are the independent variables that I'm gonna use to explain that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and for part A, I'm gonna go ahead and go to data tab, data analysis, regression. So Y range is delay. X range is all the other four variable, four variables, industry, quality, finished, and public. I do have labels. Um, we're actually dealing with 5% level of significance, so I'm not gonna change the confidence level. Output range, I just put it right here residual plots yes because the question asks us to do uh, statistical inference we are supposed to comment on the significance of the relationship because of that we need to check the residual plot all right so the equation is as follows step one writing down the equation just looking at the coefficients and my linear equation will be as follows. So the delay in auction will be equal to 80.43 plus the coefficient for industry times industry variable. So it's gonna be 11.94 times industry plus actually minus 2.62 times quality minus 4.07 times finished 
minus 4.882 times public. So this is the, this, this is the equation, right? So now we have the answer to part A of the question coming up with the um, equation, running the regression and writing down the equation. And now for part B, how much of the variation in the sample values of delay does this estimated regression equation explain? So the answer to this question is simply the R squared. So 38%, 38.26% of total variation in Y, here is delay, is explained by this model. So in, in our sample, in the current sample that we have here, 38.26% of the variation, total variation, SST, is explained by uh, the equation that we just um, created, right? <clears throat> the next part of this question, so that was part B, part B. For part C of this question, test the relationship between each independent variable and the dependent variable at the 5% level of significance and interpret the relationship between each of the uh, independent variables and the dependent variable. All right, so to check the, uh, to test the significance of uh, variables, we need to look at the p-values, the corresponding p-value for each one, but before that, it's always great, it's always a good idea to look at the residual plots. So when we look at the residual plots, this one looks fine. They should be, each bar should be symmetrical around zero. So basically, simply, uh, you should have approximately equal number of points above and below the, uh, below zero, right? If that is the case, and then you should have uh, equal variance, you should have um, almost constant variance, which means that the lengths of the bars here and here should be more or less the same. If that is the case, then you're good. The residuals are good. This one is good. This one is good. This, this one, it's a little um, actually um, not, not great, doesn't look exactly how we hoped for because here at four, all the points are above zero. All the points, all the error, all the residuals are positive. When we are at one, again, most of the errors, most of the residuals are positive. Um, this looks symmetrical almost, so here is zero. Here looks to be or here also should be negative. The average, the mean of error should be negative slightly. Here also negative. So actually the curve, instead of being symmetrical around zero, it follows a quadratic, I would say, uh, quadratic type uh, graph here, right? So for finished, it's kind of obvious. For quality, it's not that obvious. But like uh, still, like at, at the middle values, three, the residuals are all negative. That's, that's not good. We don't want that. We want to always be um, as much as possible to be uh, symmetric around zero. So this is good. Um, and then except this one, this, this is negative, negative. It's probably zero, but it's not symmetrical. Uh, this one, uh, again, it looks 
um, positive. So some sort of quadratic relationship still exists here. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna write it down. So for necessary conditions, necessary conditions of residuals, they, they look fine except for um, finished and quality. The, the, the mean of error is not constantly equal to zero for the whole range of independent variable. This is what I'm going to say. So necessary conditions of residual, uh, the mean of error is not always equal, I mean when I'm, is not equal to zero for the whole range of independent variable In the, in the for the whole range of quality and finished. So that's a violation. I understand, uh, I mean, technically speaking, if we identify a violation, we should also be looking for ways to fix them, right? But um, we're not gonna do that because the way to, uh, the, there are different things that should be done before you can actually fix this problem, like taking a larger sample, because this can be simply a result of having a small sample. So that can be the first step. And then there are, uh, other things that can be done, like taking a quadratic regression, um, uh, which can be another alternative model to this one. Uh, but again, the, there are other things that can be done. But here, we just take it as violation. We observe it and we continue uh, with the um, regression process, basically. All right, so this is the necessary conditions. The next thing that we need to do uh, before checking the p-values. So when I check the p-values, I see that one is uh, like public is not significant. The other ones, industry is significant. The p-value is less than 5%. Quality is significant, less than 5%. Finish significant, but public is not significant. Before I go ahead and say that public is not significant, it's it's, well, I mean, we should technically do a multi-collinearity check, making sure that this large number is not a result of multi-collinearity. So how do I do that? I'm just gonna, uh, I probably do it here, multi-collinearity check. And in order to check multi-collinearity, we need to, find the correlation between independent variables. So I have four of them. So we need to find the correlation between each pair of these, each couple of these um, four independent variables. Remember, I said before, if we have, whenever we have uh, dummy variables, it's, it's much better if you just remove them one by one and run the model again, like uh, run the model another time without industry and look at the p-values. If the p-value for public is not uh, significantly less than this value, then industry uh, has, does not have a, a multicollinearity with public, right? And then remove public again, Another time, remove public, run another model, uh, not public, sorry, remove. No, that was, that was you said. So industry and public, so we got it not significant for public. So just remove industry and see. But for the sake of our course, it's fine if you just get the correlation, which, I'm, which is what I'm gonna do right now. So if I go to data tab, data analysis, correlation 
input range is going to be industry quality finished and public all the way to the end of the table grouped by column labels in the first row and put it right below output range put it right below here multi-collinearity check okay so that way i get uh, correlation so multi-collinearity does not is not an issue really because none of these values is uh, greater than 0.7 so multi-collinearity no problem it doesn't exist because we none of these numbers uh, are above 0.7 and because of that we can just move on which means that we can trust this number we can trust the p-value the the large p-value for public here and conclude that this one really has a problem like there is no significant relationship between public and delay so now uh, this is this is the this we just did part a and part b and this is part c of the question like multicollinearity checking the necessary conditions they're they're all parts of um uh, part c of the question and parts of answer to part c of the question necessary conditions here multicollinearity check and checking the p-value i'm just going to write it here so for part c public the public is not significant i mean since its p value is greater than is not less than 5% is not less than alpha and we just check the multicollinearity we just check the necessary condition even though they're they're not looking great but that's okay for now we can go ahead and say that public is not significant all right so now uh, moving on uh, one last thing it says interpret the relationship between each one of the factors so how do we interpret the industry has a the coefficient is positive p value is less than five percent so industry has a significant effect on audit delay whether the company is industrial or not. And it has a positive impact because the coefficient is positive. So if, if the company is industrial, on average, it takes almost 12 more days for them to complete their audit. So that's really what it means. So there, the audit delay for an industrial company, on average, is estimated to be larger by 11.94 which means that there is a positive relationship between industry and delay so positive relationship strong relationship significant relationship next quality it's positive it's sorry it's negative relationship the direction is negative as the quality of internal controls increase increases the audit delay decreases which makes a lot of sense right and it's also significant the uh, the relationship is meaningful it's powerful the as the quality increases the um the audit delay decreases but by how much as the quality score increases by one unit the audit delay goes down by 2.62 days on average right so that's the estimated decrease based on this sample finished again negative relationship p-value is uh, so there is a negative relationship because the coefficient is negative p-value is uh 
less than 5%. So there is a meaningful, there is a significant relationship and the relationship is negative. How do we interpret this? We, as the uh, finished score goes down by one unit, we estimate that we estimate that the audit delay uh, decreases by four days. And then for public, there, it says the coefficient is negative. It says the, um, uh, the, as the company becomes public, like com public company compared to private companies, everything else the same, they tend to have lower, uh, less audit delays. But the relationship is not significant. And because of that, this doesn't have any value. Like we can't really make any conclusion out of it. So this negative, we don't have enough evidence here to go ahead and say that there is actually, there is a meaningful negative relationship between being public and audit delay. So that just, uh, this will reduce um, the effect actually, the meaningful of this uh, coefficient. So that really the size of the coefficient doesn't matter here. If it's too large or too small, we just look at the sign and uh, we just look at the p-value when we wanna interpret. So I'm not gonna write down those uh, comments, but this is how we interpret. Looking at the p-value, looking at the sign of the coefficient that just determines the direction this determines p-value determines the strength. And then you also need to comment on the actual numbers, what these numbers mean. So uh, we just did it, right? So 12 days increase in audit delay if the company is industrial. Everything else is the same. So two companies, same quality, same finished score, same uh, I mean, they, they, they're both either public or private, but one of them is industrial, the other one is not industrial. The industrial one had, on average, 12 more uh, days of uh, audit delay. So this is how we interpret this thing. Next part, part B, on the basis of your observations about the relationship between dependent variable and quality and finished. So quality and finished are the ones that are um, actually significant. And both of them have a negative relationship. Suggest an alternative model for the regression equation developed in part A to explain as much as, uh, as much of the variability in delay as possible. So what I'm gonna do for part B uh, we just figured that public is not significant. So what I'm gonna do for part B, uh, that's, that's what I'm gonna do, but we can do something else that I'm gonna explain right after that. For part B, we, we just saw that public is not significant. So I'm just gonna put it in gray field. And then, so now I'm gonna run another model as my alternative model with only the significant variables. So delay as a function of industry quality and finish. So that would be my answer to part D of this question. So regression, so column A, Great, column B to D this time for X range. So B to D for the one labels, output range, I'm just gonna change it to here for part D. And again, the residual plots, that's fine. So I'll this is my answer for part B of this question. Just gonna write down the equation, looking at the coefficients, 
we can go ahead and write the equation. So delay, audit delay is equal to 79.73 plus 12.64 times industry. It's actually, it's better to put 65, but that's okay. Plus minus 2.882 quality minus 4.19 times finished. So that is my alternative model. This is my alternative model, and we still we will have the same uh, conclusions for multicollinearity and residual plots. I don't think it's going to change how the residual plots are going to look like. Um, so we have it here. There, there. I mean, the shape is more or less the same for the second model for the this model. Um, we still see some nonlinearity here. It's not, uh, the mean of error is not zero. So this is the same observations for finished, same observations for quality. Industry is fine, it's just fine. So I'm, I'm not gonna write down the same thing, all the observations for uh, necessary conditions, multicollinearity, we just did it here the correlations are going to stay the same, so no multicollinearity. So I'm, I can go ahead and take a look at the p-values. And I see that this one is significant, less than 5%, less than 5%, less than 5%. All right, and the significance f is also less than 5%, which was the case for in my previous model as well. Uh, just checking that. Significance F tells us about the significance of the whole model, whether the um, model is able to explain the variation in, uh, in delay here, the uh, Y actually, the, the dependent variable. And it's also, in other words, it's uh, actually a test to see if R squared is positive, whether we are explaining enough uh, percent of total variation in dependent variable, all right? So now we want to compare these two models uh, as part of the answer. We wanna just check to see which model is more, um, is a stronger basically, adjusted R squared and significant variables. If I wanna compare these two, model A and model D, model in part B. So for model in part A, I have the adjusted R squared equal to 0 0.31. Point 0.31, whereas for the second model is point 30, uh, I mean, it's a little smaller, but just about like half a percent, 31.2 percent, 30.6 percent. So the difference is like is less than 0.6 percent in total for R squared. But then here, uh, we just observed that there are three out of four variables that are significant. We have one non-significant variable in model A, but then all the three variables are significant here. Given this uh, comparison, given this comparison, I would go with model D because we're losing one factor that was not significant. We're making the model much simpler, uh, much cleaner, and we're not losing that much of R squared. It's just 0.6%. Um, I don't see really a, a huge advantage uh, 
uh, in keeping public into the model. And by just removing it, we're not losing much of the uh, R squared, much of the power in the model, and we're having a, a, a model that actually contains all the significant variables. So model B is obviously a better model. Now, one last thing before I uh, close this video. Um, the, this, this, uh, this is one alternative, but based on the observations that we had here, you can see some uh, actually nonlinearity in the residual plot, which indicates, which may indicate a um, basically a nonlinear relationship between finished and delay. Right, so that's that's actually our first uh, clue here, our first indication that there should be a nonlinear, and actually the type of relationship is quadratic relationship, which we will talk about it later in this chapter. So I'm going to leave that as, a, uh, as an additional practice for you guys to work on it. Uh, try to come up with a quadratic model that explains um, delay based on industry, finished quality, as well as finished squared and quality squared. Just add these two factors and come up with a third model and compare that model with these two models and see if uh, by adding two more variables, uh, quality squared and finished squared, like two, two, two more uh, independent variable, um, you will have now five total variables, you just need to check to see if they're all significant or not, and also check the adjusted R squared, and then decide whether the increase in adjusted R squared is worth to add two more independent variables. So I'm gonna leave that as a practice to you guys, uh, but you will be able to do it after uh, actually looking at the quadratic section, quadratic regression section.